Hello there everybody and welcome to a new guide for Against the Storm. In this one I want to cover the resolve topic. This number is extremely important for your victory or for your defeat and I'm going to cover pretty much everything I know about how to influence that, how to manipulate that number, how to play around it, and I hope that by the end of this video you will understand a few things that will help you through the storms. Now, first, before we talk tools, we need to talk the mechanics. So I'll quickly gloss over how Resolve works. So this number here is the current Resolve of your people. If something changes about that, be it increase of hostility, making the, the make people less happy, be it the storm breaking in, incre decreasing the global resolve, whatever. It might be also that just the uh, porridge ran out. Either way, the number will change. It then depends on the resilience of the species, how quick that number will actually drop, and once it has dropped there, it will stay there. Now, if resolve is really high, you will gain reputation points and be, will start winning the game. If your resolve is in the negatives, your people will start running away screaming, increasing the queen's impatience for every pe person you lose that way, bringing you closer to defeat that way. Now, that's the basics. I want to quickly point over the uh, encyclopedia here, where you can check out how these species work. In a short explanation, high resilience means if these guys are happy at the start of the storm, it will take very long until they actually start going negative. If their resilience is low, like the humans, storm starts and they will be negative like in less than 20 seconds. That's the difference in resilience. So therefore, this can be used to play around these metrics, giving you the chance to make your lizards happy before the storm and then favor other species because it doesn't matter because they will be unhappy when the storm is over. So that's the basics about Resolve. Now, you can influence Resolve by uh, many, many ways. The very first of them is homelessness slash housing. So if somebody has a roof over their head, they immediately are happier. Boom, done. So you either build them a shelter if you don't have anything else, or racial specialized housing, which even gives them a bonus to resolve. These are permanent, easy to create, and I recommend them to be one of the first measures in every round to put up to make your people happier. Now, the other things that you can use here, every species has food and goods that makes them happy. So humans gain resolve when they have porridge available, biscuits, pie. So if as long as they can eat that stuff, they will gain a bonus onto their resolve until the cap has been reached and then will slowly deplete if the porridge runs out or it stay there as long as there's porridge supplied. And there's also clothing working the same way as the food, it's basically also a consumption good. They put on the clothing and then it wears out and when it's worn out, they need to put on a new one. And then there's also luxuries. Every species has different luxury um, requirements. So the humans like leisure and religion. So they like to drink booze at luxury places or they like to sniff incense at temples. Either way, if you fulfill these, you can gain even more resolve. So, in a nutshell, you can summarize for yourself, food and goods can be consumed at all times and instantaneously re yield a resolve reward as long as you supply that stuff. So it's really, really valuable to put that up as a next goal after your housing. And luxuries can only be consumed in a building that is made for it, like a temple or a tavern whatever. They also yield massive bonuses, but here's the same rule. It only is running while they can drink or sniff incense or read books or drink wine, whatever. It really needs always to be fueled all these ways to increase your resolve. These are also very powerful. And as you see here, there's always down there a line telling you how men, how much resolve you can gain out of one good. So porridge can get, give you a plus four tops, biscuits plus five, pie plus five, and for example, leisure plus eight. So there are huge bonuses to be gathered up there. Now, 
The other way that you can increase your favor, uh, your resolve, is by favoring a culture or a species. This will give a plus five directly to one crowd and a minus five to the other. So you actually go negative here. You gain plus five, but you suffer minus 10. Sometimes it is worth it though, especially if somebody is in the negatives and you can rescue them. Therefore, really, really good stuff that you should know about. Now, we are going to go into a couple of less obvious ways. So hostility directly influences your well-being. Every level of hostility drains two points of resolve. So the more hostile the environment, the less resolve you got. And to add insult to injury, you also gain a extra minus four for each hostility level during the storm. So hostility is the main driving force of destruction of your resolve. That's the main enemy of yours. The interesting thing here is that hostility is rising via very, very uh, obvious things like beating up glades and opening up more territory for yourself. Taking more years also does that. But most interestingly enough, the higher the queen's impatience, the lower the hostility. This is an interesting mechanic that you can use for yourself. I personally often stall picking up rewards from orders, for example. And I don't want to decrease my hostility level um, or increase my hostility level unnecessarily. You can totally use this red bar as sort of a hostility buffer that can be useful at times. Also worth mentioning, every running hearth is decreasing the hostility. Therefore, the total amount of hearths is really, really important. You should therefore try to build as many as possible of these, as they will allow you to expand further and live longer. There's also the opportunity to decrease hostility by burning certain fuels at this as sacrifice. So this should be always your last ditch effort, as this eats up terrible amounts of resource, but sometimes it is worth it. So coal and wood can be sacrificed to decrease the hostility for quite substantial amounts. And you can also stack that together. As you see here, you can easily decrease back to zero, but it takes up tremendous amounts of resource. Use it wisely. The other thing that you should always pay attention to is the fact that every woodcutter, check the uh, meter here, is increasing the forest's hostility. So woodcutting is a necessary evil. You will not be able to live without woodcutters, but unemploying your woodcutters during the storm is a very wise and often a absolutely necessary measure that you surely might have already noticed for yourself as well. So another little trick that you can go for is consumption control. Sometimes it can be wise to stall the consumption of certain goods for a later time. So for example, here we got biscuits. It might be wise to use them not during this time, but save them up for the storm, for example. With the consumption control menu, you can do that. And I highly recommend you in the later stages of the game to Take that as an opportunity whenever you don't know how to manage your hostility, uh, your, your resolve anymore. You can always take that as one thing, like stockpile something from a trader and fire off only when needed. But here you should take one thing into account here. They are unhappier if only they cannot eat it and everybody else can. If everybody doesn't get it, everybody's a little bit unhappy about it. But these guys, they actually care about who's being favored and who's not. So all in all, here, a last uh, piece of advice. When you want to gain victory points via resolve, it becomes succeed increasingly harder for each point you gain as you get diminishing returns. Therefore, it's really smart 
try to spread it over various species. So when you got one or two points with the humans, it's wise sometimes to favor another species for victory points rather than trying everything on one species. But there's different approaches. I also want to mention as another thing that you can use, you can use the hearth increase here for another plus two global resolve. You can also have that on every hearth you build for even more resolve bonus. And another thing that can come in very handy, but it's hard to rely on that. Sometimes in the order section, you also gain in the rewards something that gives you a resolve bonus for a specific species or something like that. In rare occurrences, traders also sell stuff that influences hostility and therefore resolve. But that's pretty much it. That's what you can do. It's mostly about juggling around during the year. You want to maximize your resolve during the bright times for reputation gain, but you should also keep in mind to, to have something available for the bad times. One thing that also has to be managed here, there are buildings like the, where was it, the tavern, I think it was. Some of these luxury buildings can yield direct hostility decreases or global resolve increases by just having this building manned up with three people. This is another method of influencing your resolve positively or influencing your hostility to influence your resolve, I bet you get what I'm trying to say here. So all in all, these are all the methods I know about. I don't think I know of any others. Well, there's sometimes a reward from the glades, but that's nothing to rely on. But yeah, I hope that this helped you out and feel free to elaborate in the comments what I might have missed. There are cornerstones for resolve as well, but, well, these are random. I guess they are pretty clear when you see them. I didn't think I need to explain much about that. All right, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Consider subscribing. Check out the description box. There's Patreon, PayPal, and Buy Me a Coffee. I'd be deeply appreciating you giving a look on these. I love what I do. I appreciate all the support. I mostly appreciate you guys watching these videos, though, because I would be nothing without you. Therefore, thanks for hanging out, and let me know what kind of tutorials you might need for Against the Storm as well. See you there, my good friends. Bye-bye.